Welcome to Appleby United's worship service today. It is Sunday, January 16th in the year 2022. And my name is Carolyn McMillan. I would like to acknowledge that we are worshiping on the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe First Peoples. May we glean ancestral wisdom from the indigenous knowledge keepers and elders whose footsteps from generation to generation walked gently on Turtle Island when it was all unceded land. May we all travel together as treaty people of Canada on a good path with harmony and respect as we move toward a healthy, peaceful future together. Thank you for joining in worship today. Your presence blesses us. The Spirit of God is within you and me and all around us. Let us worship in the Spirit of God. We light this candle remembering that the light of Christ is always present. It is always there and inviting us to notice. I'd like to share with you a story. Two brothers grew up in a family of 10 near Nuremberg. The father worked hard to make ends meet and to feed his family. The two eldest boys had a dream. Both wished to become accomplished artists, but only one was able to go to school. Their father was unable to provide an education for both of them. They decided a toy cost would be the way to solve the issue. Albrecht won the toss. He went off to school and his brother Albert went to work in the mines to support him. Four years later, Albrecht came home successful and rich. He had quickly become even more accomplished than his professors and he was well on the way 
to being able to sell many of his paintings. As he broke out the wine to celebrate with his brother and he said to him, now it's your turn. I will support you and it is time for you to live your dreams. Tears flowed down Albert's face. He showed his hands all calloused and worn from years of hard work in the mine. Not one finger had escaped the brunt of the hard work. He would never be able to fulfill his dream. His hands would not support the fine detail that was needed to hold an artist's brush. Elbrick Durer took his brother's hands into his own and he cried. He realized that the sacrifice his brother had made for him. He painted his hands exactly as they were in the painting, and it's called The Hands. 450 years later, this famous painting has become known as The Praying Hands. And many of us just see these hands and we don't know the story behind this, and maybe you have heard the story. And they're displayed prominently in the top of all of Elbrick's other work. They are still his greatest work and his tribute to the one who so unselfishly sacrificed for him. Our stories of Israel are from Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 to 5. No longer called desolate, but now named delight. I will speak out to encourage Jerusalem. I will not be silent until she is saved. And her victory shines like a torch in the night. Jerusalem, the nations will see you victorious. All their kings will see you, your glory. You will be called by a new name, a name given by the Lord himself. You will be like a beautiful crown for the Lord. No longer will you be called forsaken, or your land be called the deserted wife. Your new name will be God is pleased with her, and your land will be called happily married. Because the Lord is pleased with you and will be like a husband to your land, like a young man taking a virgin as his bride, he who formed you will marry you. As a groom is delighted with his bride, so your God will be delighted in you. And our stories of Jesus are from John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, the wedding at Cana. Two days later, there was a wedding in the town of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine had given out, Jesus' mother said to him, They are out of wine. You must not tell me what to do, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. Jesus' mother then told the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now the Jews have rules about ritual washing, and for this purpose six stone water jars were there, each one large enough to hold between twenty and thirty gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill these jars with water. They filled them to the brim. And then he told them, Now draw some water out and take it to the man in charge of the feast. They took him the water, which had now turned into wine, and he tasted it. He did not know where this wine had come from, but of course the servants who had drawn out the water knew. So he called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the best wine first, and after the guests have drunk a lot, he serves the ordinary wine. But you have kept the best wine until now. Jesus performed this first miracle in Cana in Galilee. There he revealed his glory, and the disciples believed him. Here ends the lesson. A responsive reading from our Psalm 36, uh, verses 5 to 10. And it's from the Everyday Psalm by James Taylor. And it's called Harmony in God's House. Your door is always open, God. You stand at your door and welcome all who come to it. Entry to your home is not limited to your friends, your associates, 
your social class. You extend your welcome to everyone and everything, beggars and outcasts, oppressors and victims, people who have disabilities and people moving from place to place, finding no place to call home. From rats skulking in the sewers to condors soaring in the clouds, you make them all welcome. All of creation is your household God. All can live together in harmony under your roof. In your kitchens, they are fed. In your living room, they are entertained and uplifted. For you are life itself. Continue to give us life, O Lord. Show us how to live in harmony in your home. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. When Jesus was present, miracles are possible. Jesus' miracles are often called signs in John's Gospel. They may reveal something about Jesus But they are not intended to call attention to Jesus, but to God, his source of power. Signs may or may not be attractive or interesting to look at, but they are not, in any case, ends in themselves. Signs point to something beyond themselves, something much bigger. When Jesus' mother asked him to do something about the host running out of wine at the wedding, Jesus was reluctant. He made it known that he wasn't ready to go public with his ministry. This was much earlier than he anticipated, and with the push from his mother, she knew that he would have to step into his new role. The role that they had been grooming Jesus for his whole life. And I'm sure that she could see his greatness the person that he had become. Why not choose this moment to let the world know that he was God's chosen one, the long-awaited Messiah? She knew what he was capable of. Next to God, his chosen parents were his number one supporter. Can you recall a time in your life that someone had to give you a push of encouragement to help you live into the new greater you? I don't know about you, but sometimes I spend too much time getting ready to get ready. I want to wait as the moment's not perfect. The time is not right. And I don't know enough yet. There's more to learn, more to do, more to read. Chances are that we are ready. Sometimes we need that push from a loved one with words of encouragement to tell us that we can do it. We have all that we need to succeed. And if we just take that leap of faith, we'll get there. We have heard in Genesis that hospitality of Abraham and Sarah towards the three travelers and the hospitality in Sodom and Gomorrah that was in question is what is important to God. We have been told throughout scripture that loving God and loving our fellow neighbor is our prime directive. And as we travel with Jesus along his journey, we learn the importance of sharing a meal through wine and bread with your family and friends and those that are less fortunate than us. For the time being, Jesus turns his attention to the matter at hand, a lack of wine at a crucial moment in a special social event. At his mother's insistence, he transforms six massive jugs of water into wine. This wine was so good that one of the guests questioned why they'd been holding out the good stuff to the end, because it's customary that the good stuff comes out at the beginning and the worst quality at the end. Turning the water into wine was an act of God's great hospitality. In Jesus' case, that day at the wedding in Cana, that was his defining moment. John tells us that very public act of transformation 
was the beginning of Jesus's miracles and the beginning of the great lessons that Jesus came to teach and share with the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the Christ who made his way through early celebrations and storms, facing trial, death, and new life, never turning away from us. May we find our own discipline and compassion, never turning away from others. Amen. Thank you for the many ways that you continue to support Appleby and our community. Let us pray. Creator God, accept these gifts of offering with our love and our gratitude for all you give us. Guided by your spirit, may we do your will to further the work of Jesus that of compassion and justice in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you pray with me? 
a wonderful sign at the wedding in Cana, something to celebrate, a wonderful sign of change. The ability to combat and reduce pain is welcomed. The dedication of good nurses and care aides is realized. The value of dietary advisors, physiotherapists, laboratory and medical staff is appreciated. The careful training of surgeons and doctors and the refresher courses that they take are valued. The frustrations of those with chronic illness come home to us. Please take a moment in silence to say the names that you would like to hold up to God in prayer. The fears of dying are vivid for us. The grief of the bereaved touches us. With surprise and joy, the value of fresh insight comes home to us. We join together saying the words that Jesus taught us.
May the God of all directions, the God of day and night, be with you today and for all time. Go out now to do the will of the Creator and the way of the Son with constant presence of the Great Spirit. Amen. May God be with you in your going out and your coming in, in your rising up and your laying down, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears, until we meet again. As we put out this flame, we remember that the true light of Christ is one that endures forever. Thanks be to God. Amen.